What is a normal transit time for the stomach? A. 10 to 12 hours. B. 10 minutes to 4 hours. C. 5 to 10 minutes. D. 2 to 6 hours. The answer is B. 10 minutes to 4 hours. Stomach transit time varies widely. It can take anywhere from 10 minutes to 4 hours for food to pass through the pile or sphincter into the duodenum. Transit time in the stomach is affected by the composition of the meal, and by the individual's rate of gastric emptying. Transit time may be shortened due to consumption of liquid or simple carbohydrate foods, or lengthened in the case of consumption of solid food that has a high protein or fiber content. What is the normal transit time of food through the small intestine? A. 3 to 8 hours. B. 8 to 12 hours. C. 12 to 18 hours. D. 1 to 2 hours. The answer is A. 3 8 hours. Normal transit time of food through the small intestine is 3 to 8 hours. This is significantly longer than transit time through the stomach due to the wider variety of digestive processes that occur in the small intestine, including the catabolism of proteins, lipids, nucleic acids, and simple and complex carbohydrates. What is the average transit time of the colon? A. 16 to 24 hours. B. 8 to 16 hours. C. 24 to 32 hours. D. 2 to 4 hours. E. 32 to 48 hours. The answer is E. 32 to 48 hours. The average colon transit time for both adults and children is between 32 and 48 hours. This is significantly longer than the transit times of food through the stomach and small intestine, which averages 4 to 12 hours total. A slow transit time through the colon can be increased by various lifestyle factors such as exercise and hydration and dietary changes such as an increase in fiber-rich foods and avoidance of food allergies or other constipation triggers. Which of the following structures is the main blood supply to the small intestine? A. Inferior mesenteric. B. Superior mesenteric. C. Right hepatic. D. Left gastric. The answer is B. Superior mesenteric. The main artery supplying blood to the small intestine is the superior mesenteric artery. This vessel branches off the abdominal aorta and supplies the lower part of the duodenum, the ileum, the jejunum, and two-thirds of the transverse colon. The rest of the colon and the rectum are supplied by the inferior mesenteric artery, while the right hepatic and left gastric supply the liver and stomach, respectively.
All of the following are salivary glands except, a. Submandibular gland. b. Parotid gland. c. Sublingual gland. d. Thymus gland. The answer is B. Thymus gland. We have three main types of salivary glands, the parotid glands, the submandibular glands, and the sublingual glands. The thymus gland is not a salivary gland, and is located in the chest just superior to the heart. Which of the following is the main signaling molecule that acts on salivary acinaur cells to increase production of saliva? A. Acetylcholine. B. Epinephrine. C. Dopamine. D. Serotonin. The answer is A. Acetylcholine. The primary signaling molecule that acts to increase saliva production by acinaur cells in salivary glands is acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is released by parasympathetic innervation and triggers muscarinic receptors in salivary cells, leading to increased saliva secretion. While serotonin, epinephrine, and dopamine may have some effect on salivation, they are not the primary molecules through which the process is controlled. In what part of the brain is the swallowing center located? A. The medulla. B. The cerebellum. C. The thalamus. D. The cingulate gyrus. The answer is A. The medulla. The swallowing center is not a specific anatomical structure, rather an area of physiological control. The swallowing reflex is primarily controlled by the medulla, and to a lesser degree by the pons. None of the other structures listed play a significant role in deglutition. Which of the following molecules is necessary for absorption of vitamin B12? A. Intrinsic factor. B. Norpinephrine. C. Serotonin. D. Sodium. The answer is A. Intrinsic factor. Dietary vitamin B12 must first form a complex with intrinsic factor, a gastric glycoprotein, before it can be absorbed into the hepatic portal system. Individuals who are unable to produce intrinsic factor are at risk for developing B12-related macrocytic anemia. While the other molecules listed are necessary for a wide variety of digestive and nervous system function, they do not directly control vitamin B12 absorption.
which of the following enzymes breaks down triglycerides in chylomicrons and very low density lipoproteins, VLDL? A. Hepatic lipase. B. Lipoprotein lipase. C. Colipase. D. Lingual lipase. The answer is B. Lipoprotein lipase. Lipoprotein lipase hydrolyzes triglycerides into two free fatty acids and one molecule of monoacyl glycerol. Hepatic lipase aids in the regeneration of LDL. Colipase is secreted by the pancreas and is an important coenzyme for optimal function of pancreatic lipase. Lingual lipase is a fat digesting enzyme that is secreted in the saliva and aids in the breakdown of dietary lipids before they are stored in chylomicron form. All of the following large intestine bacteria are considered beneficial except ASH. A. Lactobacillus plantarum. B. Streptococcus thermophilus. C. Lactobacillus acidophilus. D. Clostridium difficile. The answer is D. Clostridium difficile. All of the bacterial strains listed have been shown to have beneficial effects on gut and immune health except for Clostridium difficile a pathogenic bacteria commonly seen in hospital settings after prolonged antibiotic use. Clostridium difficile has been associated with chronic diarrhea, behavioral disorders, and colitis.